Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. If you're watching us live, we want to really appreciate it. If you're watching us on the replay, hopefully you'll pick up information that will be of value to you today in this broadcast. Today, we have myself and Cheryl on. Brandy is teaching a class today at the Learning Loft there in Kansas City. So she's not able to join us today, but hey, she's sending us some notes as always, things she wants to make sure that we cover because that's Brandy. So Cheryl, what's your thoughts on today's topic that we're going to discuss? Well, basically we're talking about rebooting when necessary. Um, as you know, that's my major word when anything goes wrong with computers or anything else. Reboot them, clean out the trash, let it let it come back up to the perfect state. Yep. And, you know, rebooting, one of the things I used when I promoted this episode was if your smartphone starts performing a little bit sluggishly, like they always do, they just get overloaded, too many apps running other things. What do we do? We stop and we reboot. The same thing with the computer. You get too many things going and things just get sluggish. And that's the problem in business. So often businesses get sluggish and that's why we want to come and talk about the term reboot, which can also be reinvention. I want you to think for a minute right now, and this is companies that you have seen disappear from the business landscape. They're not there anymore. What's some of them that are not there anymore? Well, a big one is Sears Roebuck. Sears Roebuck refused to reinvent and reboot. And if they had, they would be Amazon today. They would control it because Sears Ro Roebuck was the retail king of America at one time. Many of us grew up with the Sears catalog. But times changed and printed catalogs wasn't where it was going to go. Brick and mortar stores was not where it was going to go. And it required new thinking, new thoughts. And that's what happened when Amazon came along. But it's not just Amazon. What about Radio Shack? You remember Radio Shack? How about Circuit City? And as we watch, you know, we watch businesses that we grew up with. Where did they go? What happened to them? Well, quite simply, maybe they died off because they wouldn't reinvent to today's world. So Cheryl, what would be your the first thoughts on the word reinvention or the other word we're using, which is rebooting? Well, I like for Cheryl, I like the word reinvention because reboot, there's a chance of it not coming back. Okay. But um, with the reinvention, the thing about it is, is you can't do the same thing every day that you've done for years past and expect any change out of it. So without the reboot, without cleaning out the trash, whether that's your employees, whether it's just bad habits, um, whatever it is, you need to fix it or you, you're shut down. I mean, we've, we've seen you and I have lived through a lot of shutdowns. Yeah. And you know, it takes me back to when I first started in the coaching business, which is 12 years ago now. And one of the things that I did as a part of this was that I started doing on-site analysis of companies. And what I do is I go and I spend two days at the company and I'm observing all the operations. I'm observing what's going on. I'm actually doing and I'm determining what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses, what are their opportunities, what are their threats and what are their fears. And what I'm also wanting to find out is where do they want to take the company to? After that, I do a very in-depth analysis report of the company and I tell them all the things that I see. And then I give them a suggested strat strategic plan to follow to move to where they want to go. And the most, Cheryl, what do you think the most common answer I get from people whenever I do this analysis? What, what do you think they tell me? Number one, it's too long, but they they tell you that they didn't realize a lot of it, I would think. Actually, it's exactly the opposite. They tell me, I, you know, we know all these things. You really didn't tell us anything new. What we don't know is how to fix them, how to fix them. And that's, a, that's where we start this with is the first thing you've got to do to reboot your business is you've got to know what is the problems in your business. 
And as an example, have you ever taken a picture of something? And in the picture, Cheryl, you've seen things in the background that you didn't see in the viewfinder whenever you were shooting that photo. Do you ever seen those type of things? Oh, yeah, more than you really want to imagine. That's why I learned to do Photoshop, literally. Yeah, but a lot of times we may even see Facebooks about these funny photos of things that are in the background that people weren't aware, and they shot a photo, put it on social media, and there's something in the background. They wish they had never put that photo up because of the background that was in that photo. So a lot of times this is very similar. You got to be looking at your business. And today we're going to share a tool for doing that with you. And it's a free tool. And so, but we'll be sharing that in this episode. So be sure and stay with us. And you want to make sure that you get this tool and you put it to work. Okay. So sometimes you can self analyze the business. But the other side is a lot of times you need an outside person to do this. I'm going to give you an example, Cheryl, here. We have one client that I went to their office and did an initial analysis probably 18 months ago. Okay, it was a new client. I've known this man for many, many years. We were very good friends. And since I worked with a friend of his and got a recommendation that we had helped them so immensely move forward, but I was talking to him about waste. Well, I'm there all day long on the first day. Well, when I bring up waste in the discussion, he told me real fast, Jerry, we don't have no waste. I said, really, that's very interesting. So as the day went on and I observed the business operation and I observed the waste that was occurring that afternoon, I asked the question, but I thought you said you didn't have any waste. And he looks at me with this really long look like, well, I guess you're right. And it took a while after that for them to get into developing the waste tracking strategic plans and the training that we do on how to see the waste. Because when I go in, I'm looking at all the corners. I'm looking at the movement. I'm looking at how often that business owner is called to answer a question that should be answered in their processes. I'm looking to see if that team is using that manager as a crutch, which I often find. I'm looking for where they are not getting the return on that business. And I also look at where is the money going to. I'm looking for where they're strong. I'm looking for where they're weak. I'm looking for the threats to that business. And many times, I bet you if you asked the owners of Sears Roback back in the 1980s, if a company in a garage was going to put them out of business one day, which is what Amazon did. So what's your thoughts as I say all that? Well, the thing <laughs> is, uh, many business owners are so in depth into the day and day thing that they're not doing what you are. They're not looking, they're not overseeing it. They are, they're working in their business instead of on it. So it makes it hard for them to see, as, like cleaning a room. A lot of times we can dust the room, but the thing we miss is the corners. We don't see the corners because we're too inept on what we're doing. So that's I think that's where business owners fall short. They, they don't step back and look. Right. And what we're looking at right now is the gentleman that was our guest last week. And he talked about how he was rebooting his business. And we talked last week and that's Sean Kramer. I just put his comment up on the screen right now, but how Sean had come to a determination that he had to work on leadership. He figured that if he works on leadership, this could be the biggest gold nugget to move him forward. But you see, he just made a, he just made a statement there. Waste is definitely a part of why we have had to reboot in the past. We still have a long way to go, but paying attention to the waste is extremely important. Now, what Sean has also learned is this is an ongoing task, okay? Rebooting, you just don't hit a button and everything is cleaned up and it's all going to work. What you're doing is you're making the hard decisions. You're de building new strategic plans, but you also have to be really careful because you could actually try to move too fast. 
you can't take care of every problem. What you've got to do is come up and you've got to establish what are your priorities. And again, talking to Sean last week, Sean's working on a lot of things, but again, one of the priority items that he has selected and he's concentrating on is how to build the leadership skills of his people. Now, there's a really good book that I read in the past, and the name of it is The One Thing. And the whole principle of The One Thing that's written by Gary Keller, found he's one of the guys that founded Keller Williams Real Estate, is that you've got to pick those one things, the priority items. And what I often tell people, what is the number one thing that you could change today that will make the biggest difference tomorrow because this is not a shotgun approach. This has to be laser focused. You've got to take your task and you got to do it one at a time. So Cheryl, what's your thoughts on what I just said? Well, I like you read the one thing and it, it really, I would suggest that book for anyone because it narrows down to the fact that you cannot do everything at once as it's impossible. You, you'd have to prioritize, but even after you get your priorities straight, you still need to pick the one thing, because especially if your behavior is like mine and yours, everything's important. Right. So we, we have to be very careful um, with our behavior styles and to pick that one, because again, they're all important, but till you do, you're just, you're going to spin your wheels. If you can get the one thing done, it's out of the way. Then once you've got that, it makes the other things easier and you're back to the first step. One thing again. Right. You know, two weeks ago, Cheryl and I broadcast, we did a synopsis of this book. Mr. Jenkins told me. And who is Mr. Jenkins? Mr. Jenkins built a phenomenal, phenomenal business here in the Charlotte market area called Morris Jenkins Heating and Air and Plumbing. And that book is one I highly recommend. In fact, one of my clients told me the other day, he said, Jerry, I'm not believing the value I'm getting out of this book because Mr. Jenkins shared with his son-in-law, Jonathan, all the things that needed to be done to move that business. What they were doing is they were adapting into a business that their customers were looking for. And they developed a lot of things. They started running six, seven days a week. They started running two shifts and they came up with a marketing slogan. You know, if your heating systems broke down, call Morris Jenkins, you'll have warm air in your house tonight. And if in the summertime, if your air conditioning has gone out, call Morris Jenkins, you'll have cool air in your home tonight. Cheryl, you remember those uh, commercials that were on television and all? Quite well. But I want to add something about Mr. Jenkins right now. The man rebooted twice. He fired everybody in his company twice to come up with the people that he could use. Mm -hmm. And his soon-to-be son-in-law was one of the ones that was stayed with him and moved on. And it was... It's a it's a great book, but yeah, I, I remember the jingles. That you can't you can't. I think they're still out there. We just don't watch public TV anymore. Well, he's gone more to Mr. Jenkins told me, which is his service technicians. Which, if you look, his service technicians are greatly diversified, and they show a lot of the different culture. And that's also what it's all about: is determining and building the right culture within the company. And that's kind of going back to what my friend Sean's doing and building these leadership skills in the company. It's in an effort to increase the culture. It's also an effort to take it off from, to take him from being a crutch. But what you've also got to do is, and this is what we often find is, companies don't have the processes and systems. We've interviewed several people on our broadcast, such as Al Levy, who's an expert in that area that has helped a tremendous amount of people in the home services arena to build these systems. Keep in mind, how many times is a mistake happening because it wasn't detailed enough? How often do you as a manager get asked a question? And think about this for a minute. What if the answer to every question that came to you said, hey, what does your SOP say about that? That's what I often tell people. Would that not be a great day? The day that your answer becomes, what does your, what does the systems, what does the SOP say about that? So again, 
you know, another book, and this is a little bit of self-promotion, I'll be honest with you, but I actually worked on a book that we published several years ago. It was myself, Ed Crow, who's a human resources uh, expert, and Patty Lawrence, who's an expert in the world of finances. And we wrote a book called The Small Business Owner's Manual. And it covered all the steps that a person needs to look at in order to build it. So, you know, one of the concepts was it's like you're starting a new business. Are you building a new bow strap, which means a new product? Or are you building a better version of an existing mouse trap? In other words, what are you doing? What is it? What is your business providing? When you look out there, are other people providing that? And how are you making yourself the community expert in what you do? Think about that for a minute, the community expert. And who's the community? Well, that's the people that buy from you or they may buy from you. So Cheryl, what's your next thought in this discussion? Well, my main thought is basically you can't do it by yourself. You can, but Mr. Jenkins pulled it together, but he had people to help him. And that's where I see a lot of businesses faltering because they won't reach out and get the help they need to take that extra step. Um, I think Sean would be one that would tell you uh, that, yes, he had people that helped him get where he was going. And because they could see that 50,000 feet above and where, again, he was working within the business. So it's it's like anything. Sometimes you just need a little help. Sometimes you got to have what you call that magic moment, that magic moment in life where you've decided I've had enough. I can't take it anymore. When we went through speaker training with Larry Wingett, one of the things that we had to do was develop what Larry called our points of view. Now, Cheryl had a lot easier time getting her point of view out. She was one of the first people. So Cheryl, when you, when you were doing developing your point of view, what is your point of view and tell people what this means? You know, I want, I want to say I'm glad I did instead of I wish I had. That's a short version of it. But what it means is I don't want the regrets later. Um, it started when I was a child. It went all the way through my adulthood. It's something that I've always, I think I have always lived by that because I, I'm not good at saying I can't. So I just, I never want to apologize because I just didn't have time to do something. Yeah. And mine was change is painful and it's up to each of us to decide. Do we want to keep continuing the pain we are in or do we want to go through the pain of change? Sean just added another comment in here. I'm going to bring it up. I wouldn't be where I am now without the people I have hired. However, in order to go to where we want with business, we need to develop our team or add to it. So that's exactly right. When you look at it, Sean had a magic moment. And the magic moment was when he figured out that he wanted to go to another level and he needed help to do that. And that's what we, that's our relationship of what we have. You know, I divide businesses that have issues into four different categories. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my categories with you. You know, Cheryl, there's some businesses, they just need a little polish and a little bit of TLC. Things are pretty good. In fact, I'm working with a client right now that I think his business is pretty good He's doing some polishing and some buffing to take it to the next level. And I'll bet you, as I was talking, you knew exactly who I was talking about. I did. Yeah, you did. So that's one category. Maybe you're a business that needs just a little TLC, just needs a little bit of buffing, a little bit of polishing to get to there. Now, we run into other businesses. They need a scalpel. We got to go do some carving. We got to carve some things out of this business. And we may have to do a little plastic surgery. We may have to do a lot of a little of those things. Then I run into companies that I've done analysis for. They need a major landscaping. Okay. They got so many issues going on. It's a major proposition for them to reboot and reinvent that business. And I'm working with some of those. Like I said, I've had them on all the all gamuts. And then some need a total overhaul. I mean, it's sometimes, believe it or not, I've asked the question, are you sure 
you want to have employees? Are you sure you want to grow the business that you're describing to me? Are you sure? Because it doesn't appear that you're willing to put that effort in. Share what your thoughts as I shared that up, and I'm going to pull something up on the screen while you're talking. Well, I agree with you. The thing is, a lot of times you've got to give up something to get something better. And many people are afraid to let anything go for fear of they'll falter. And that's what's making them falter. Right. So what I've pulled up on the screen right now is part of our self-analysis form that we provide <clears throat> on our website. And this is a wheel and the wheel you're looking at, we have divided the business into five different categories. It's divided into sales and marketing, operations, your leadership, your administration, and your personal. Because a lot of times what we see is the business has taken over the personal life. There is no personal life. Sometimes we find challenges because a husband and wife team are working in the business together. And Cheryl, have we ever seen times that they were not intended to work in the same business? Several times they definitely should not have been there. Yeah. So anyway, this is a form and I'm going to give you the website link to go to this, but I would highly encourage you that if you're wanting to do a self analysis of your business. This could be the place for you to do. So I've shared it on the screen and I'm going to put the link in the comments right now. This is a free form. It is not meant to be a marketing funnel. It's not going to drive marketing emails to you. It's our, it's our way of trying to help people put together. It's a very in-depth form that you go through and fill out all these questions that Cheryl, Brandy, and myself, we do this every year and we do an updated version at the end of every year. And this is to prepare people. It's also for their goal and commitment setting for 2023. So we've done this for almost 10 years now. And each year we try to refine it and go to a higher level. So if you simply click on that link, it will take you straight to that form. Go fill it out. Once you fill it out, just go to the upper right hand corner. Then you can print it. You can save it as a digital file, whatever you want to do in order to assist you in doing that determination. But again, a lot of times what it's going to take, and there's a lot of people you can go to, but what I'm getting ready to share with you, I don't want you to consider this as a self-serving announcement. You know, one of the things we do is we work with, uh, we work with companies across the U.S. in the home service corridor, and we work with them from a consulting and a coaching basis. But here's the real thing. When I started doing this 12 years ago, there was no one else in the chimney and vending industry besides myself doing it. Now, do you have other people you can go to? Yes. What you got to do is if you want someone to help you is get someone that can understand your business. That's why we do our inside on site visits. It helps me to understand what that business owner is going through. So Cheryl, what's your thoughts on what I'm saying right now? Well, I mean, you know, pick the right coach, pick the right person to help. Not every, not everybody's for it. Everybody. So you, you need to, you need to choose who you're there. And many of our clients have other coaches too. I mean, we had several coaches ourselves. Coaches have coaches. So it's something that you, you need to have to better to me, to better yourself. I mean, our coaches worked with us. That's why. I think we're, we're where we're at and I love working with people. You love working with people and we'll be more than glad if we're not the person that you're there, we don't mind telling you another place to go that may help you. That's, but, that, yeah. It's not a map. It's, this is not a self promotion announcement because like I said, there's actually people that are, that are working and developing coaching businesses to serve our market that we're actually assisting at this time. Okay. I'm because of my time in here. Hey, I'm willing to work with these guys and I'm helping some of them 
develop their coaching skills and how to work with people. And we do refer, we do refer other people in at times because they're the right mix for this. So here's the thing. And one day, and it kind of got me one time, Cheryl, it was actually a guy recommended me to another guy for a coach. And the guy said the following. So, well, there's one problem with me contacting Jerry. What's that? Well, I don't like him. Ain't got nothing to do with it. A lot of times, because of what we have to do, we are not trying to win a popularity contest. If Jerry Eisner was trying to win a popularity contest, I would have gave up years ago because that's not in my nature to try to win a popularity contest. My desire is to watch people get and assume the dreams that they have in life where they can make them their reality, where they can provide what they're wanting. And the number one objective to be in business, the reason you run a business is to provide you the means to do the things that you want to in this world. But more importantly than that is to make something that you feel fulfilled with. But above that, it's got to be something that makes you happy. If you're going to work every day and you are miserable, <coughs> it's time for a reboot. If it's something, if you dread pulling up in your own parking lot because of the chaos, then it's time for a reboot. But I want you to remember what I'm getting ready to say, and this is going to come on pretty hard. That first time I ever listened to a Larry Winget, who I respect greatly and I've learned a lot from, he was doing a video and a friend of mine sent me a tape, said, you got to hear this guy. And Larry Winget was saying the following. Do you want to know why your sales suck? And the reason your sales suck is because you suck. Now that's pretty hard to take. But business owners, managers, if you are not, if you're unhappy, if things are happening in your business that you don't agree with, you're allowing it to happen. Now, that's hard to hear, isn't it, Cheryl? Yeah. And I mean, no one wants to be told that they're the problem. But the old adage, the buck stops here. If, if everybody's not happy, it starts at management. Yeah. And just like Sean just put in the comments, if you're not happy and the people around you are not happy, something needs to change and it will need to start with you. That's the hard lesson of leadership. I think that I've seen Sean develop over since I've known Sean and worked with Sean. So anyway, it's just a little message to you today. So again, we've got the free, we have that free, free jot form questionnaire goal setting guide. You've got the link in your comments. Go there and use this. It was put together with a tremendous amount of forethought because in order to get Brandy to approve anything, folks, believe me, you got to do a lot of work for Brandy will put her name on it. Don't we, Cheryl? A lot of work. There you go. So anyway, we're going to end today's broadcast. We hope this has been a time of value to you. Hopefully, you may take a really hard look in the mirror. Hopefully, you may figure out that it's time to reboot. And if you need assistance in this rebooting, reach out to us. Maybe we're not the right choice for you, but you know what? I bet you we can connect you up with somebody that may be just the right choice to help you because it's all about turning those business dreams into your business realities. So Cheryl, anything you want to add before we bounce out of here for the day? I would say just take a step back, see what you've got in front of you, and then start working where you're at. Use this self-analysis if you desire to take it. Don't just fill it out. Use it. Okay. Okay, folks. Well, we want to thank you. It's truly an honor. It's a privilege. It's a pleasure when we're able to share our thoughts with you like this every week, feel free to like us, share us. We're available on many popular podcast channels out there. You can find us all over the internet on our YouTube channels, everywhere else, our social media, follow us. Let us know how we can help you turn your business dreams into your business realities. And with that, we'll see you next time on the next episode of the chimney and fireplace.